it's it's right on the chair. Yeah, I know that. Do you see it yet? And now I'm dead. Stand Survival Podcast, bringing you survival game news. Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of State of Survival. Today, we're going to be covering Day Z. But before we get into the nitty gritty and the overall episode's topic, let's go ahead and talk to our staff and see how they're doing. Yarl, how has it been? Oh man, it has been insane, but good. I'm going through the jury duty thing, which is really weird post-COVID. It's totally different than what I did it before. It's been a great learning experience. And uh, just prepping to see my baby girl graduate high school. And you thought that was a tear. That's me wiping off sweat of relief. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. Like, I was never an overachiever in high school like her. And it is crazy how much crap she has to do. Uh, but it's been good. Nice. Now, is, does she win any awards or anything astonishing or amazing? A lot. I'll be talking uh, I'm not valedictorian, but she got uh, Mayday Court royalty. She was prom king and queen. She's gotten all these scholarships. She's doing all that stuff. You know, I got one scholarship for acting, and that was it. So I only had to show to one award ceremony. But she's all these award ceremonies that during the week leading up to graduation. And it's like, man, how many times do I got to leave the house? <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Well, what about you, though? Besides jury duty and your daughter graduating, what do you have going on? You know what? I have been sucked into Day Z once again. Um, I, I've been kind of addicted since the last update. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, but other than that, it's the Yush. Um, I'm hoping to stream Dungeons Dragons tomorrow. Um, but at the same time, I'm looking forward to Project Zomboid on Thursday and the other streams I have lined up. And uh, playing Daisy with you, I got into the kick of it. And I'm like, you know what? I think I want to do this on Friday. I ran into so many fun people that I immediately started playing with the next day. <laughs> that is awesome to hear. That is awesome to hear. And let's go ahead and ask our producer, how is he doing? Red, how are you doing? Oh, busy, busy. Um, you know, all the usual fun of, of a day job and a mod follow up from 121 and trying to, uh, you know, find the little no CMs that appeared after that update and getting that sorted. And, um, yeah, I just like Jarl said, playing, uh, together with the, uh, the crew last week was tons of fun and, uh, Really looking forward to uh, to doing more of that. Very very nice, very Thank nice. You. That's awesome to hear. And have you uh, had to um, have you fixed any of the bugs and problems you said you had last week? I'm sorry. You, uh, just continue on. I'm, I'm having some uh, issues on my side. Okay. Worries. No worries. Um, but uh, to going on to our overall topic of this episode folks we are going to be talking about daisy 1.21 i know we're a little bit over a week late but we thought we would give some time for things to stir and fester before we decided to tackle what is going on with this update and how it's affecting not only players server owners or modders but its overall feel and how it's being received we did have a fun live stream this last thursday to really tackle it Yarl, Red, and myself all went and played on a community server to really enjoy and possibly find and encounter some of the issues. We encountered some things. We've had some um, fun um, situations with some of the updates, changes, and embrace some of its different situations it has created. But let's go ahead and move on to our main topic and talk there. The update is here and it is to stay, which is really awesome. Now, I first want to jump into our live stream because our live stream really gave us a full-fledged, I would say, immersion into the update and all that it's changed and has overall given to us. Jarl, during the live stream, was there anything noteworthy or anything else that you really enjoyed doing? Uh, honestly, the adventure to meeting up with you guys was the best. 
Uh, I ran into a really cool person that I spoke with for a little bit. I uh, kind of showed them where I left some loot behind. I'm like, hey, I got to go. I'm not going to use this stuff because I've got people to meet. But there's stuff in this house over here. Really cool one. And then he was like, hey, can I uh, join you guys? I'm like, ah, we already got a full group, but otherwise I would. Uh, and then all of a sudden, um, I went out with this other guy kind of following him along. Had no idea he was planning on killing me. So when I got to an orchard and I was like, ooh, apple. He unloaded everything he had on me, and it was this weird duel of the fates standoff where we were doing circles around each other. Oh, that was hilarious. Now, I didn't actually experience that kind of thing because I think I met up with you guys pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, it didn't take too long to get to you guys overall. But uh, yeah, it definitely was uh, more of a rough experience trying to survive long enough to find you guys i think i yeah, had to I think, myself like i think you were with times. red i think you were with red for a good 40 minutes before i showed up <laughs> yeah definitely definitely um but no i mean me and red were running around and looting uh downtown cherno everything just seemed to be going pretty well the infected and most of the loot was pretty nice actually definitely uh had some funnier moments I, I think when it comes to like the looting it definitely felt like there were some changes made maybe to the loot tables themselves but like you and i were talking about during the live stream there's uh there's the apples right and now we can get the apples and we can eat from the apples but there's too many <laughs> i remember when it was a luxury to find one but you go into an orchard you'll find pears plums apples to your heart's content although that's how i got killed was i was picking a bunch of apples <laughs> so i avoided it the next time uh no but you know just going around i was sitting there i remember telling red hey by the way you know you don't only have to find the stones on the railroad tracks you can actually make stones with a hammer like the railroad tracks are a really bum way to make it on my way to you guys i found four stones on the railroad tracks uh, oh my gosh that was uh that's funny to hear and I remember when we finally met up, we met up at a well just outside of the industrial of Cherno. And we're all at the well, and there was a guy that was kind of being shady with me in red. And we were trying to get him to come over and talk, and you walk up, and you're wearing my beanie. And I jokingly said, hey, that's my beanie. And oh, yeah, that guy, was when you guys were talking to the other guy. When I, when I showed up, you guys were in mid-conversation with this dude because he was letting you know where people were dying and stuff, and it looked completely amicable. So I stood there, I waited for my turn to speak, <laughs> and then well, you... Well, he ran up behind you. you. No, that was because of what you said. You tell chat what you said. If you not, tell. I'll tell them what you said. Oh, okay, well, you tell them what I said. Twist my word. I walked up, and you're... First off, Red goes, oh, this is our buddy here. Red's being the gentleman, like, just so you know, he's not a threat. And then immediately, Dump Draw goes, what are you doing here? Hey, that's mine. Give me your hat. And, like, this guy goes, oh, I'm going to help these dudes I just met. I'm standing there talking to you guys, and then right in the back of the head, I just get clobbered, sent off my feet a little bit. I'm like, oh, oh. And then I get hit again. Before I even realize what's going on, Dump and Red were on either side of me going, I, I, he's a friend, I... And then we had this weird standoff with the guy where we're like, no, you could come back. It's okay. And he's like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no, he ran. He didn't come back after that. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, see you guys later, bye. <laughs> just over oh, the horizon. Gosh. Oh, my <clears throat> gosh. Well, I think let's go ahead and talk about patch 1.21. Let's go ahead and just discuss about what kind of content did they give us. I know we spoke about this earlier on this month, but it seems they've done a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of improvements and stuff. What do you think about it overall, y'all? I will admit, when we were playing, we didn't get to see a whole lot of the like weapon balance and stuff. So I played a couple more days out of the week last week, and I got to see someone use a mace and how effective it is. Uh, he was minding his own business at a well. 
I was approaching, some freshie came up behind him and hit him right in the head. He pulled out the mace and clobbered the fr freshie. I don't know if he hit him once or twice, but very short amount of time that freshie was done for. Um, wow. But I did get to, uh, I was involved in a crossbow fight. I didn't have the crossbow. Uh, but the nice thing about the crossbow fight was I think they work really well. I was a relatively fresh spawn. I had some different clothes on, you know, some more inventory space. And I'm talking to these two guys who are distracting me. And I heard the thwack. And that to me is huge when you can listen to your surround sound and turn in the direction and see the bolt sticking out of the building. I went, oh, and when I went to tell them we were being shot at, that's when I saw this thing fly out of the corner of my eye and it was just like dead. I thought that was actually really nice. Um, I did end up seeing the third guy as I was falling come out of a bush. So it was, it was an ambush, but it's nice to see that he still had to get that close to me. And even then he didn't hit me in the first shot. So he had to shoot again. It, I, I think that's a very fair balance. Even if the crossbow is silent, and even if it does a lot of damage, it's nice to see that kind of thing. Well, definitely. And besides him sticking it to you, how, did, you, did you feel like you could react after him missing the first shot? Like you could have burst off? Or did you kind of like freeze like, ooh, that's really cool. And then like, oh, by the way, there's an arrow in my eye. Mm. Very good question. If I wasn't so worried about the two friendly guy, if I didn't fall for the trap and I immediately knew they were up to no good, I would have been able to bolt before that second shot hit. Okay. It was from, from the moment of seeing it in the wall and going, wait a minute that's relatively close to me being concerned about these other two gentlemen that were kind to me. Uh, that's kind of when I, I died. Okay. Darkwing laugh it up. Why don't you? <laughs> well, you know, that's really good to know. Did you actually get a chance to uh, play around with the chainmail armor or any of that kind of stuff? I got to play around with the breastplate baby. Uh, so I witnessed the breastplate. I saw a dude, running around. He got shot from a long arm. I don't know what rifle it was because of the way that they've changed the sound. The guns sound a little different at a distance, but I saw that bullet hit him in the chest and he went down. I don't know if it killed him or if it was just the, the, the stress damage that knocks you out. But when I saw him fall, I was pleased to see that just because he was wearing metal chest breastplate, that it wasn't bulletproof. That was a really good thing for me to see, to see him go down that quick. Um, of course, I don't know what condition he was ahead of time, but he wasn't running like he was hurt. On the other side, uh, a few hours later, I saw a guy wearing the breastplate and I'm like, you know, I'm going to be one of those jerk fresh spawns. I really want to try it out. So he and I had an intense fist fight. And I'll tell you, even with my rock, it took everything I had to bring him down. And that was a nice feel because he was wearing a motorcycle helmet and a breastplate. All I had to do was punch his legs and his limbs to get him to drop. I ended up winning the fist fight and walking away with the breastplate, and it was awesome. Uh, but at the same time, it was thrilling to see that that kind of is a really good uh, anti freshy repellent. <laughs> awesome to hear about. Now, I do know that during Experimental, there was a uh, Experimental Update 3. They pushed out a change to the medieval armor, and it made it actually very beefy. Uh, even Wobo, the legendary man of statistics himself, uh, did a video of it, and you can actually take quite a bit of shots and stuff. I even think uh, Marx did a video on it showcasing just how many bullets and explosions you could do. And while the armor wasn't like 100% prote uh, protective, it had a trick to it where the armor only reduced uh, damage by like 20, yeah, 20% 20 for the chainmail top. But then when you put the uh, the plate carrier on or the plate on top of it, it was another 20%. And that was the first version of actual armor stacking we've ever seen in DayZ when it comes to clothing. Um, I wonder if they actually reduced that situation. Um, Red, do you know I if they actually reduced that situation? I, I could see them reducing it, honestly, but at the same time, I'm wondering if they should. Because if the metal breastplate 
and the chain mail is a 40% damage mitigation, then what happens when they get chain mail and then put a plate carrier on top of it? Like with that kind of armor stacking, are we looking at a crazy amount of damage resistance or is it equal? Because I don't think that the breastplate should be equal to a plate carrier, but I think it should be more than a press vest, if that makes sense. No, it does make sense. And I think it actually, the plate carrier does provide more armor to bullets and to explosives than, uh, of course, the uh, the chest plate would. But uh, it was just interesting because it, about 40% damage reduction with that armor layering with the chain mail and the chest plate was uh, just quite interesting to some people. And they actually were saying that it was uh, broken, that uh, medieval armor should not be able to do that kind of situation. But, you know, it looks like maybe the devs did listen. I haven't heard really anybody complain about it too much well, other than initial I don't know. post. I don't know. There's a part of the historical side of me that thinks they're wrong, because even when guns started to be introduced in late medieval warfare, early Renaissance, the two pieces of armor that remained for a while were a chain shirt and a breastplate. Uh, after that, the breastplate. I mean, it did do something for reflecting ammunition, but I mean, we're talking armor piercing rounds for a lot of her sniper rifles and stuff. So, you know, I hope that gets factored in, but it should stop a, a good deal, especially against something like a shotgun. Um, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos where they've actually shot medieval quality. Like, here's a piece of steel that's shaped in the same way as breastplate that's the same thickness and then they shot guns at it and you'd be surprised at what that stuff can do in real life but my question to you dump is do you really think that the medieval armor is that common that it's really going to cause a problem or is it just going to be once in a while where you get a chain shirt and a plate carrier well, Daisy did say they added a new loot tag to the medieval items, the boots, the chain mail, all that stuff. Um, and it is only going to be in castles. So if you're playing on Shinaris, you have a higher chance of finding it, but that's because Shinaris has more castles. Where if mm -hmm. you're in Livonia, they did actually announce that Livonia might have a way higher chance because in Livonia, they said that all of the medieval armor stuff will also spawn in hunting locations. So if you folks are actually interested in playing uh, DayZ to get the medieval armor and stuff, might be able, might want to play on Livonia map more because Chernaris, it's only on the castles. That's the only place. Um, so yeah, I don't think the chance is very high on actually either map, but Livonia definitely is higher. If I could put I it do, on like... I do think the cool thing about that, though, with Chinaris is it gives us some tier two armor that's actually worth a damn. I mean, it may not go toe to toe with a plate carrier, but I would say based on that dim that map that you showed us, that graphic of where the tiered loots were, in my opinion, I think that you're going to see that tier two armor benefit people a lot because of where the castles are located versus Northwest Airfield and starry so bar where you find some of the plate carriers nice very nice yeah and you know that's that's the important part is that um between exp um, experimental and stable folks there are vast differences in how the economy is handled and that's the most important thing to remember is that experimental is truly what it says it's an experimental testing ground. It's meant for you to test and break and bust everything that they give you so they can fix it when it goes to stable and have a proper stable. Does that always happen? No, but that actually brings us up to our next subject, which is we're just going to be going over the fixes and the change log real quick. Now, the fixes and the change log are, once again, folks, a very, very large amount of fixes and attempts. We have things about here, fixing wall exploits, looking through the walls, fixing the glitching through the walls. We have the fixing of um, some bugs, such as, you know, being able to uh, not ruin handcuffs to unlock your buddy's hands, or that heat packs weights were incredibly, diff um, incredibly high that they shouldn't be. Overall, folks, a lot of these changes are actually... Uh, or a lot of these fixes, rather, are actually really good for us 
to be seen because most times these fixes, while there are many of them, many of them are, I would say for lack of a better word, unrelatable to most players. Uh, and what I mean by that is you don't really understand what they're saying. You're just seeing some text on a change log and you're all like, oh, okay, cool, that's cool. But I think a lot of these actually really relate to player issues, player issues that really matter. Some of them uh, are more important than others. So like I was talking about how they talked about they fixed further exploits to look through walls, and this was a feedback tracker that was put, put out there. Then they uh, had a... It was possible to execute a stealth kill even if there was an obstacle between the player and the target. Um, now this was more of a killing the infected and that kind of situation. But it was um, an issue that I did read about, actually, where the person would get stuck inside of a wall if they tried to do this. So they would literally kill mm -hmm. the infected and they would be confused with a wall. <laughs> and the wall would push them out eventually, but it just wouldn't be very beneficial for them. Um, but then there were the, some of the interesting changes, which are pretty cool, too. What, what do you think about the changes, Jarl? The audio you know that they, they were putting a lot of focus on fixing the uh the explosions audio but i gotta say that i was very pleased with uh the audio uh applying to some of the guns the doppler effect felt better like i said when that guy got shot with the breastplate and i heard a long arm i was having a hard time telling if it was a mosin or a cz and what distance it was so like you know, that kind of Doppler effect is nice. The way that you hear the gun uh, report off the distance and then the way it hits people. It's it's interesting to see that kind of uh, an adjustment. Now, you also did talk about your excitement about the lighting changes. Oh, man, I've never used glow sticks more or at least felt safer using glow sticks. Uh, especially since I was playing on Essekur, a lot of that map is is uh, forest. Uh, but there were a lot of times I was running around with a glow stick in my hand and I heard people fighting and saw them fighting nearby me. And I didn't have to worry about my glow stick being a beacon to my location as much as I had before. Yeah, and you know, that is a really good point. And it actually brings up a point about this a topic overall because we're going to go a little bit more in depth on this after our hot takes but what i want to let people know is that daisy actually is listening and expanding upon its fixes and its changelog the whole glow stick the whole sound issues and everything else actually weren't really issues that they should have been worrying about or that they don't necessarily needed to worry about it could have been one of those situations where they're just all like well Maybe you just shouldn't use glow sticks. You know, you make a choice, you make a choice. But they decided to go back to the glow stick situation or to the lighting situation overall and go, you know what? How can we make this better? How can we improve this to make the game feel like a more player choice experience with true rewards versus consequences? Because I know for a fact, I used to love, um, I love glow sticks, but I only ever used them when I knew for a fact either I was alone or... I used them very, very sparingly. I used to hotkey them. So we put them on, I'll put, I put them on a proxy slot and I would hotkey them. And what I would do is I could actually put them in my hand and then I could put them back in my inventory. So I could, I never kept them on my backpack is what I meant. So that's how I use proxy sticks. I would pull them out, look around real quick, and then I would put them away. And that's how I always used glow sticks. With this change, I might still use that method, but I won't use it as often. And that's a really good thing for us to look at, and not only as me and Jarl and Red, but also as a community, that the devs aren't only just listening to us, but they themselves are looking at how to improve the game to go back to old concepts and actually make those concepts better. But yeah. I, think I really did enjoy that they've improved the animation for throwing. Even the item flying through the air doesn't seem to stutter through the air as much. Because one of my uh, one of my um, favorite things to do with glow sticks is if I'm being shot at because they see my glow stick, I'll dip behind a tree, I'll pull it out, and then I'll chuck it. 
but I won't chuck it far. I'll just chuck it somewhere near me so it looks like I'm hiding behind another tree and then I dip out. And that felt so much better, just having being able to see the glow stick in the air and knowing where it was going to land so that I could run before it hit the land. Because before, when I threw it, it would stutter through the air. I'd have no idea where it was going. I'd have to wait till it touched down before taking off. But now I actually saw the path it was taking. So the moment it left my hand, I was able to run. And then they're still looking for a glow stick. It just bought me a little more time. Hey, I was going to just jump in on this uh, kind of initial uh, talks about uh, 121 before we we close out the section and, and move along. But uh, definitely some, I think you hit it on the head dump where it's clear that the devs are, are listening. They're trying to really thinking about how to improve the game and how to improve the experience. Um, you know, we saw uh, not a ton of new items but a whole ton of fixes um, of little little issues and things like that that, that were uh, annoying to players. Um, that being said, there was also some new issues introduced. Um, so I know that they, they definitely affected my mods um, with vehicles. There were some things that, that popped in where if a vehicle despawns with a player inside of it, it'll crash the server. Under normal circumstances, that's not a thing that that would really happen unless uh, an admin is going and deleting a car with somebody in it. But with my mods, there are some scenarios where that could happen. So that's something um, I've got ticket if, tickets in with Bohemia to uh, to try to uh, get resolved or figure out ways to mitigate. Um, that also the as as you all found out when we were streaming uh, last week, um, the terrain is a little bit softer than it was previous to the update so uh, it's possible for players to uh, slip down beneath the map i mean that's kind of been an ongoing thing but that's definitely a thing that can happen same thing with vehicles i've seen them kind of get sucked under the map um but uh, again the devs are aware of it they are they're efforting uh solutions on those so and before we go to our hot takes i want to go over a few comments because i know we're dealing with some issues on our end um one point the dark wing brings up Probably still break your bones, and this is in reference to being shot by guns and the medieval armor. It will probably still break your bones. Modern plates absorb some shock, so that might be a benefit versus medieval armor. Medieval armor may absorb, you know, 40% damage if you're double stacking, but from the way that guy fell after I witnessed him getting shot, I'm pretty sure it doesn't do much for shock damage. Uh, and also, Always Dreams just uh, commented and replied to Red that said... I've been impressed with the input from the devs. We had a few years of calm, but since 2019, they're definitely uh, made a lot of improvements. I agree. I really also think that they're being more transparent with their communications with the community. Yeah, you guys are both totally right. Totally right. Speaking on issues real quick, because it is important to bring up these. Folks, there is a current issue with the vanilla object spawner where... When items are spawned in through that system, the static items, they remain persistent through restarts and they start to stack within each other. Please be aware of this because it eventually can cause your server to crash. The devs are aware of this and they are working on this. In that same note, the devs have put inside of the patch notes that if you scale any building above 1.0 or below 1.0, your building will have no geometry or no co collisions. So please be aware of that. All right. I'm going to go ahead and go first with mine. Um, my hot take for now is the starting gear. Uh, it's something that I think is kind of uh, a hot topic in my eyes because there's a division in the community on what you should start with. Some folks are happier with the elements that we have currently. Um such as, you know, having bandages, having a rock, having a weapon. Those are in a lot of modded servers. Some people don't like that. They just like you starting off with some rags and, you know, maybe a glow stick, which is pretty common on vanilla servers. But I would go as far to say that I would like to see some more server uh, modifications. I think servers should be brave and give people some things. 
on the day one as a server I was playing on, one of the things I enjoy about it is you get a roll of bandages and then you get a piece of food like an apple or a pear or a plum. But then after that, you also get a third item that's random. It could be a map. It could be a can opener. It could be a rock. And I really like that flexibility because if you're constantly dying and respawning, it doesn't exactly break the game by giving you this stuff, but it does give you some tools that you may be able to find useful. Okay. Sorry um, about that, folks. Um, a little discombobulated the show. Um, so I wanted to talk about modders in the Daisy community. And it's it's timely, I believe, mainly because we've seen a few uh, of the bigger modders step away from the community uh, recently. We've certainly seen that, you know, in the past uh, year or two, there's been some, some of the pretty big modders that have stepped back. Um, and so I wanted to bring, you know, being a, a modder myself, kind of bring that perspective that there's kind of a good and bad and ugly uh, being a, a modder and especially one that's uh, uh, doing some things that a lot of players enjoy. Um, certainly a lot of love from the community. Um, I know I've, I've gotten a lot of uh, positive um, comments and support by the community um, as I developed my helicopter and boat mods and kind of continue to improve on those. Um, but I've also seen um, kind of the darker side where it's, uh, you know, heaven help you if you make a mistake, uh, if you put out uh, something that's janky and you don't immediately fix it. Um, and some people have, uh, you know, day jobs and things like that. And certainly pre-COVID, um, I imagine it was it was worse for folks because you're away from your um, from your home setup. Uh, you really can't go and fix a mod if it breaks and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, I, I definitely know that there were some people that just got totally uh, blasted uh, because of issues that happened or they, they made uh, design changes uh, intentionally and they worked completely, but people didn't like them. Um, you know, in the case of uh, what happened recently with, uh, with Zarge and he just decided to step away. And there was just massive blowback from that, uh, just because there were maps involved and so forth. So it's a it's a tough uh, it's a tough gig, and and people have to remember that modders are doing it really, for the most part. You know, ninety nine percent of them are not doing it for money. Uh, we may get some donations, but those really don't even offset uh, development costs. Uh, they're doing it for the love of the game. That's certainly why I do it. Is I enjoy uh, building things and getting them into into game as much as I enjoy playing. Um, when it, when it, the enjoyment starts to get offset by way too many entitled people expecting way too much for nothing, uh, that's when it can, it can turn on you. I, I agree with that 100%. And as a fan of modding, like I, I mod a lot of fallout and I, I go to Nexus all the time to mod. I've noticed this problem is kind of more prevalent with multiplayer games. And I would really like to see the community start to understand that a bit more with say DayZ or space engineers it doesn't matter what game you play because on the single player games you don't really have that much venom in the communications although i'm not the modder so i don't know what kind of correspondence they're getting via email or anything but at the same time uh it, it can be huge it can be detrimental and i think it's important that people take a step back and and just remember that these modders are they do, they're not doing this for money. They're working a job. They're coming home and they're doing this in their free time, their hobby. They're giving you something that you would enjoy out of whatever spare time they can get out of their lives. And I'm, I'm actually glad you brought that up, Red. I think that uh, Red brings up a lot of good points, so just Yarl. But I do want people to know that, uh, or rather modders, sometimes you have to have thick skin to be a modder in most of these situations. That's true. However, sure. I'm a very true person in believing context is everything. And while I can look at many of the modders who have walked away and said they didn't have thick skin, I don't know the full situation, nor can I ever truly understand the situation. So when you decide to look at what a modder did to walk away or what circumstances that led up to it, just remember you probably don't know the whole story, and even the smallest details in someone's story can really matter. So from my perspective, 
Modders, keep working as hard as you can, and remember at the end of the day, you do this because you enjoy it and it is your passion. Whether you're doing it for a future profession or as a hobby, it's your passion. Don't let someone take it away from you. Fair enough, fair enough. Couldn't have said it better. All right, folks. So let's go ahead and take a more in-depth dive into our live stream itself. Because you know what, folks? I don't think you guys got all the full details about all the exciting and rather silly things that happened during that live stream. I ended up becoming the navigator, apparently. I don't know how I actually got stuck with the job, but I did. <laughs> Although, the funny thing was, is we were following Red through the hiking trails, <laughs> but I was the one we, uh, telling uh, us where to go. And then, get this, folks. You know who was asking, are we there yet? the leader <laughs> no, i was gonna say i don't think it had as much to do with the fact that you had to navigate as much as it was that you and i were following red and he's like are we there yet <laughs> and it was like maybe we need a different navigator <laughs> i loved that red thank you but so you, much you notice i was i was also the one that was stopping when we were about to run into the open fields and saying whoa, whoa, whoa hold up a second let's peek around let's see let's look in this town and see what's going on and true Red was very tactical. He got down on his knees and he's looking around the open field. Meanwhile, I'm like, <laughs> just running out in the open field. Oh my gosh. I mean, I'm, I'm a gazelle. I got a prance in the field. <laughs> yeah, right? We, but, but to Red's credit, I understand it now. After watching the stream, I'm like, you know, they did just wait 45 minutes for me to meet up with them. And Dump and I are just like, la, 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 la. And we could have been taken out at any point. Oh. I think the only reason why Red still rolled with us was so that we could be like his fire detector. You know, we, we'd right. run out and if we got shot at, he'd know not to go any further. <laughs> that or if we if we found oh. a bear, I knew that I only needed one shot to get away. And that was <laughs> what are these guys you legs? Run, you don't got to outrun the bear. You just got to outrun the people. And that's right. <laughs> oh, we're not even friends. We're just people. <laughs> we're just people at that point. <laughs> oh, and then there was the first i mean like right after i got met up with you guys and i got knocked in the back of the head a few times we were standing by that pump i will say my only my only thing that i was like and i know the daisy devs are aware of it but to sit there and say and people should no longer be falling through the level and meanwhile while i was standing at the pump with you guys i was like wait what's going on huh? ah, 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 ah. But in your guys' viewpoint, I was still standing there. But from my viewpoint, I was fall. I was going to the Stranger Things. I was doing the uh, the underworld, whatever they call it, the upside down. And I was just sitting there like, what is going on? The moment one of you stepped up to me, it fixed it. So if you guys are out there and you're having that same problem where it appears that you're falling through the ground, just, you know, calm down, have one of your friends come up to you and you'll pull right out of it. It's really good. And we have a comment from Always Streams. I believe it is in regard to uh, Red's hot take. It's it's an incredible amount of hours, too, not including the time spent learning. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are definitely right, um, right about that. There is so much time and effort put into learning these kind of things. What, what about you, Red? What do you think about that comment? Oh, 100%. Um, that's one of the things that attracted me to, uh, to developing mods was while there was some resources for the initial like where to look and what a config cpp is and and how that you know how everything kind of works at a high high level uh once you want to go past that it's a lot of figuring it out yourself crawling through the the modders uh, discord looking for you know getting really good at searching and trying to good find good search terms to get little breadcrumbs of what you're trying to figure out um, and a lot of trial and error you know, getting back to the live stream itself, there were some interesting and slightly sketchy moments we had. I knew uh, we were playing on a server. I think it was the Karma Crew Shinaris, Summer Shinaris mm -hmm. server. But there was a lot of gunshots going off, and uh, we definitely were uh, had our heads on a swivel um, near some of the larger areas. We actually ended up... Uh, remember, You remember that campsite we found, guys, right outside that castle? That we were trying to loot for some crossbows and some other stuff. Right. That was a like, that was a it, custom event. That was when we saw campfire smoke and said, Oh, let's go take a look. And then I started kind of flanking around, thinking that it was somebody's 
a player's campsite. And it actually turned out to be, it was a custom event that they had some little improvised tents and a campfire and some things. It was really cool. Yeah, it was uh, really dope. There was, yeah, definitely some loot to be gathered. And it was actually a pretty decent looking uh, event too. Like it was on a, on a slope but like none of the tents and stuff were all floating or anything. So like it was a good dynamic event, I believe. And that was just fun to stumble across a server using di the new dynamic event system that came in, uh, I think it was 1.18, 1.17? I think that was 1.18. I think it was 1.18. Oh yeah, okay. Well, there you go. Uh, so it was really cool to see servers actually making use of that kind of situation. And then... Uh, we headed on over to a town nearby, which was kind of uh, had some interesting encounters. So I think we were lo looting the police station, and I believe that we were listening and trying to keep our heads on a swivel. And we came across a police car with an interesting scope. Jarl, can you tell me more about that scope we found? That was insane, and it wasn't even at a police station. We found the scope in a maroon car parked in a yard, and it was just so bizarre. We were trying to get the optics because even if you don't have a gun, you if it's in good condition, it was in pristine, we could use it. Uh, and then while we were sitting there, Red was looking at it, and, and then he died. Like, somebody shot him from the bushes. It was crazy. It, you and I had to take cover, frankly. Uh, Red was a hero. I mean, I, I don't even know. For, and for some reason, right around the end, Jarl started referring to me as Lenny. I don't I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Look at the something know. about the rabbits uh, and th think about the rabbits. Know, now that you're saying that, I'm just mm, I can't really remember. Do you remember that? Tom? I don't remember that. Uh, I remember the store going very differently. <laughs> we even have a YouTube short on it, folks. It, it, You're it, a the thumbnail is you a sir yard. are a traitor. <laughs> so I'm running around and Red's trying to pick up a scope that Jarl has found, and the scope long behold is bugged. I'm around the other side of the car trying to get into the passenger side to see if I can grab it from there, and I hear a pap pap from a little pea gun. And I run over, and Red is dead there on the ground. And the only person who around who looks like they did trouble was Jarl. So, no, you know. No, no, no. Red was standing out in the open. He he lectured us about running out in the fields. And, okay, it was me, all right? It was a scorpion. Double shot. You know, I double tapped that. Put him down. I had to. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, and then I had to, to, put to you down. defend myself, to defend myself, I don't know which one of your communities Gumby is from, but he put a hit on Red. And the moment Red was like, <laughs> well, I got to go. So I'm like, oh, before you go, you should look at this scope. It's really good. You might be able to use it on your gun. And he's sitting there. Well, I'm just going to drop a, um, and he's looking at it. I just couldn't help myself. I had to make sure that Gumby's bloodlust was satiated. <laughs> But don't worry, folks. I got red revenge. I shot Yarl. He got back up. I was going to keep him alive, but apparently he just wanted to run around and cause noise. And so I shot again to draw all the infected, and he got beat to death by infected. Oh, it wasn't that I was beat. You handcuffed me, and I stood on the other side of the car, and that's... No, I couldn't defend myself. Don't sit there and... I was handcuffed. You you're, sat you're there and watched as I became lunch meat. <laughs> you're darn tootin' right you can defend yourself. I tied you up and I took all your guns off of you so you didn't kill me. <laughs> Dave came out around the corner and was like, y'all's been talking shit lately. And he made sure that I learned my lesson. Ah, <laughs> uh, good old Dave. Good old sorry, Dave. Dave. I'm sorry, okay? I don't know how many times I gotta tell you that. I'll send you some chocolates. It'll be fine. Oh. Uh. But let us actually talk about the new projectile system from DayZ itself in this patch. This system is interesting because it's not 100% a bullet system. It's not the explosion system. It's an entirely new system that, of course, maybe uses some of the baseline systems. But it's its own mechanics. And this is actually a really cool take on it. Because, as Jarl said in our last uh, DayZ episode, that 
even the arrows rem remember the direction that they're shot from. Or rather, my apologies, the bolts. Which is actually pretty darn cool, isn't it, Yarl? That, like, it being shot even remembers where it's shot from. Like, they, even, even the angle. The 100%, and honestly, that's how I saw the guy in the bush at the very last second when I was dying. Because I was able to see the bolt in the wall, what angle it came from. I warned my quote unquote buddies that's real betrayal right there and uh as i was going down i saw the guy pop out of the bush i'm like okay that makes sense it makes sense how he missed me from just across the street with the first shot i have no idea because i'm not one of those people that bobs back and forth i hate that you know like nobody's actually sitting there in real life like hey guys oh are you doing okay you want some water that's great nope he does that no one not in real life i stand there like a numpty and this bolt still missed me. So anybody who complains about the crossbow being laser shot OP, that's just because you're a good player. I don't think they're broken, <laughs> but it was neat. It was neat seeing the arrow in the wall and finding out exactly where it was. Oh, yeah, that, that's really cool. But it does open possibilities. Let's like actually talk about the differences between the projectile system and the bullet system. Now, I'm also going to be bringing Red in here, folks, because Red is a fellow modder, and he has a pretty good concept of how Daisy Engine works alongside when we talk with Yarl. But bullets work in a very interesting way. They become essentially invisible projectiles that are essentially just invisible flying to the person. The game still renders them going along trajectory. They still do lots of other things, but there is actually no physical embodiment for that bullet. When it interacts with objects, it will show particle effects of it going through it and a couple of other things. It does have, uh, is affected by the in-game mechanics like the wind, is it raining, and various other things. The full system inside Daisy is very, very advanced. But the projectile system itself, while maybe picking backing off of that or building upon it, is its own unique system now, and it's not actually the same as the bullet trajectory even though technically it uses the same ammo classes what do you think about that kind of stuff right yeah i mean you you hit it on the head where um traditional um bullets when fired there's not a like a model of the bullet flying through the air um like you would you know you would imagine if you're going to try to depict everything um in game as it would be in real life it's it's more of a mathematical calculation um, to determine where it's going to hit. And then the action occurs when it actually impacts something as far as, like you said, the uh, spark or the whatever object it's hitting or the blood coming out and then any damage that it's doing to that object. So that's the base. What you described there you know, really, really outlines pretty well the base projectile system. Now, a couple of patches ago, they introduced the M79 grenade launcher. And actually, there had been some um, previously, but they they were in mods and they, they were using that same base projectile system. And then when they put in the M79 grenade launcher, they actually started a, a variation of that projectile system where uh, you could actually see the, the object, the, the grenade being launched. Uh, actually did exist in real life um, and had a, it had a different effect because it wasn't impact damage, it was explosion damage. So I think that was the the initial foray into, um, you know, what you wanted to talk about with when they brought in the crossbows and how they had to do something completely different with the crossbows. Yeah, definitely, because I do remember what you're talking about, where you could actually physically see the uh, kind of uh, warhead literally hit the ground and start smoking and stuff mm -hmm. from the grenade launcher. However, it was not interactable with. It would roll around and would update the particle system. Let's say a good example is the smoke grenades from the M70, right? But it technically wasn't even really a object that was being um, I would say tracked really well. Because like if you shot an M70 and threw a grenade, uh, threw a grenade um, the grenade actually was better rendered, rendered and taken care of by the world than actually the M70. The M70 almost followed a followed a pattern all the time all the time. Mm -hmm. Um but that's uh where the crossbow projectile came in, right folks? Um 
this actually is truly like throwing an object, except for it's being launched from something. So I think that's what's really cool. And like Red explained, the differences between them aren't like hugely vast. They didn't like build this from the ground up, but they did build upon something and make something um, newer and better, which is really awesome. But that brings me on to a subject that I think Yarl can pitch in on here a little bit because I feel like we left him out. <laughs> no, um, oh, no, I've got less to say, but I was waiting on the next point. Ooh. Wait, you got anything to say about this system or are you just waiting? Yes. So, so what I love about the new crossbow system is the parabolic arc it takes. And when they were doing their demonstrations with it is if you notice how the, the arrow leaves when they were tracking distances, it actually is fast, and then once it hits its terminal uh, altitude, it slows and then starts speeding up on the way down. Now, that doesn't sound like a big deal because it's a crossbow. Nobody's going to shoot it like a bow. But that's the point I'm trying to make. No one's going to shoot it like a bow. You don't sit there with crossbows typically unless you're doing long-range sieges in the medieval ages where you fire the crossbow up so it rains down. But the fact that they've thought about this leads me to believe that they're also considering bringing back bows. And I really hope this comes to fruition. But one of the things I've always wanted was sharpened sticks, spears, being able to make your own little javelins. You take a long stick, you know, that sharpened stick you cook with. Let's turn it into a weapon, you know, give it give it some basic melee properties, but also just being able to huck a spear, I think would be critical. And having a system like this with that parabolic math makes adding things like that in the future a lot easier. And like you and I were talking, if you and I are looting on separate sides of town, I think it would be really cool to have a craftable bolt where you could attach something to it, whether it's a glow stick, a flare, a note. You know, that would be really cool to be able to send messages uh, to people and fire them. Uh, and I know that Dump has mentioned how cool would it be to put a small explosive on the end? Have it heavily impact the range. You've already got the math for it. If they're calculating for weight, I'd I'd love to see that too. Um, so I'm very excited about the new parabolic arcs. And uh, one of the things that I just thought of going back to the arrows sticking in the wall and how you could see the direction, I've adapted to that very quickly. But what I loved about it was when Daisy, the Daisy devs, were doing their stream before the official release they convince that one guy to have a duel with them. They're like, yeah, as you can see, the bolt is sticking in the wall, but the guy was still having a hard time finding the dude. And I'm like, bro, you just told us about this cool feature. Follow the path. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that, it, that it's definitely a, a help, I think. But well, you mentioned a I, few I'm things more... in there I was going to jump on. So bows. Yeah. So the all of the kind of uh, vestigial components of bows are in the game. Uh, they just haven't been fully fleshed out. So I would go out on a limb and say, I believe those are coming soon ish. Um, but then you made the big quantum leap from, you know, uh, a grenade launcher to a bow or a crossbow to a bow, and then being able to throw something like a spear. And that's a whole other thing. So right now, everybody knows you can throw objects at, at players and they really don't do anything to them. It's just kind of, hey, you threw something at me. But I have seen some, some notes and some other things that lead me to believe that there is going to be something coming at some point in the future that allows thrown things to actually affect players, which is the gateway to being able to have spears or being able to throw rocks at other players or anything like that so that that'll that's i agree with you that would be really cool to be able to do that that's what I, I would definitely i would love to throw rocks right i'd love to see that feature because i was rolling with a group on saturday and sunday and on saturday when i was rolling with them every time i'd go out okay i'm gonna go out and get firewood and i'd come back i'd be pelted with wellies and handcuffs and various items we didn't really need just everybody throwing stuff but how funny would it be if you threw a rock and it hit me and i'm just like and I just fall to the floor. That'd be so amazing. I, I want to be the first to say, folks, if they introduce that throwable items, which uses the physics engine inside of DayZ to cause damage, I promise I will make a mod that puts boulders on a bunch of cliffs that you can roll down on people. I'll do it. 
Imagine rolling it down in front of a car. Like, go full Ewok. Like, Return of the Jedi. Just be like, and just throw the rock right into the road. That'd be so good. Disclaimer, I may not be able to fill for fulfill for promises if it causes us crashes or performance issues. <laughs> Can you imagine how bad you'd be? Put that Man, I'm glad we have a working car. That that spark plug was so hard to find. You just see a boulder roll out on the road. You're like, <laughs> oh. but uh. this entire subject does open Pandora's box, which is what possibilities inside the projectile system do we actually see? And I, I like you all said, you know, notes on things, explosives. I could actually even see. Things like one thing I've always wanted to do in my base building mod is traps. With this projectile system, this is actually a pretty good possibility. I can make it so people can create uh, gunpowder spring loaded spike traps where there's just a bunch of sharpened sticks inside of a box, and when you trigger it, it goes poof, and a bunch of sharpened sticks explode out of it, and those are the projectiles. What other guys, ideas do you guys have? I mean, that one scares me because now every house I'm going to enter, I'm going to look at like an Indiana Jones crypt because I got to worry about bolts coming out of the walls. And every time a game puts that in it, I always die terribly. <laughs> I never pay attention to that. I'm always like, look at these hieroglyphics, which is clearly there is a red herring. I'm like, oh, ah, that would be so funny to do. I would love to see that. What about you, Red? You got any fun ideas? Um, I've got more ideas than I have time to even go down rabbit holes on. Uh, believe, oh, yeah? Believe it or don't. Oh, no, I have uh, extensions of my mods. Hey, it'd be really cool if you could build a thing like this. Um, so I, I try to <laughs> I try to limit my imagination a little bit. Um, <laughs> Red's oh. over there thinking about putting scorpions on his helicopters. Those are those like <laughs> large crossbow ballista things that just be like. <laughs> <laughs> it would oh, give rooms God. a use a use other than just being lit on fire. <laughs> Correct. But uh, you brought oh. up something like having a full size ballista um, that you could load sharpened logs onto and launch them at a base. Oh, um, I mean, there's the possibilities are endless. Ten and actually, balls. yeah, in the uh, I'll bring this up because I thought it was funny. Darkwing's comment of uh, poop bolts. So the idea. Yeah, of... I saw it. I had to comment on that. I was like, oh, sepsis has to come back. Sepsis has to go back. Yep. That's so horrifying because that's like what the Aztecs did with the poison frogs. You just like cover a bunch of nasty stuff on your bolt. And then it's like, great. Now I'm sick. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But no, just imagine like muskets or even cannonballs or just like other like the ballista like you said or imagine this true frag grenades Ooh. they're like when you throw their frag grenade and it goes off it produces a bunch of projectiles around it instead and you'll literally like see shrap metal embedded in the wall obviously it won't stick around forever but like I think that'd be kind of cool, right? Because I do, I do believe I have that right. Frag grenades are the most dangerous thing about them is the shrapnel coming out of them, right? Correct. That's one hundred percent correct. Yeah. Well, if I you're going to do that, if we're talking projectile systems, take your frag grenade idea, make a pressure plate that just gently lobs a grenade up, and make your own bouncing Bettys. Oh wow! What about what about what about them actually redoing landmines? Because don't landmines kind of work that way too? Or are they just pure explosives? It depends on the landmines. Land yeah, it depends. They, they have different effects. I mean, I, and it's funny, you guys are going to the gruesome side. I was thinking about, hey, what if we could rig a tripwire with uh, one of the remote detonators, but then hook it up to a fireworks display? So when somebody trips the tripwire, it starts shooting off fireworks, which then draws uh, infected. Okay, you said that <laughs> our idea was gruesome. Our idea was instantaneous death. You're uh, talking about literally devouring death. I guess that between that and the poop bolts, I guess that is a, that is a worse way to go. Putting, can you imagine putting fireworks inside a small room and you're like, okay, there's a kitchen and a couch. Ooh, can opener. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the possibilities with this are actually hilarious. Like, I had an idea the other day of making it so... 
uh, landmine, you could make a landmine that had a magnetic plate to it that could attach to cars. And once attached, it armed itself. So here you are driving down the road. You think you avoided the landmine. And what you really hear is beep. Beep, 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 beep. Stump, you're not allowed to make mods anymore because your mods are just going to be the movie Saw. <laughs> it's just going to be these weird contraptions. Like, what if we put a remote detonator on a helmet so that when you put it on, I can hit a button and then spikes go in your brain? Well, you can't take it off, though. <laughs> okay. Um. So let's go ahead and move on to our community uh a stat um status or community response rather what does the community think about the new content items now we covered this in our very first episode about experimental 1.21 and the community is okay with it now honestly though what we really should be asking is dave what we heard from <laughs> yarl you're up i don't speak dave Dave, Dave is still salty about me making fun of him about his two-week vacation. I'm oh. sorry, Dave. I, I understand. Uh, but Dave seems to be uh, impressed with community response, which is good. Oh, yeah? Well, yeah. That's good to hear. Oh. Oh, that was just rude. Okay. Uh, he actually says that uh, he likes the new content problems, uh, additions and he thinks the community's response needs to broaden their scopes on some of the fixes they've done and not just what they've added because that's where the true meat of it is it's amazing he can get that in two syllables <laughs> well you know you, <laughs> you interrupted dave i know i know okay uh dave you're awesome star of the show folks dave is really hitting down uh so let's go ahead and talk about some of the issues that we have heard about across all the platforms. So we did touch about them a little bit earlier about people falling through the map, possible uh, issues with items that are spawned through the object spawner, not despawning on server restarts, causing a buildup. And then we also heard about some of the other issues out there. Now, this is actually kind of an important fact to note, folks, that Daisy itself while they try super hard they don't have a large enough scope for testing out their patches that doesn't mean that they don't try and it doesn't mean that they should stop putting out their patches it just means that there are so many variables inside of a game this large and this old that there are things that they can't actually predict until it's actually fully unstable the way people can stop this stuff from being a problem when it goes to stable is playing the experimental mode as much as possible. Now, I know PlayStation doesn't have its own experimental servers, and that is a shame. But if you do have a PC or an Xbox, please jump on the experimental servers and start helping. Now, I did go around and I did ask some people in the community for feedback on what they thought about the stuff. Some of the, some of the uh, people that we got the feedback from were scale speeder so from scale speeder which uh, makes amazing tutorial videos for arma daisy and many other things uh if you don't know who he is you definitely need to check him out on uh twitter um but he goes great elements to the update and the cross code could be the best item to be added to the game since 1.0 launch access to the p3d landscaping items is a game changer to console modding see dawn's nature overhaul conversion that's another amazing person in the console community i will have to put his links in the description for you folks just a shame that yet again we're seeing bugs related to the lack of console testing json duplication players falling through the map um, through custom objects and etc official console experimental servers is not enough we need to be able to test our community console experimental servers as well now this is an important fact he's bringing up that the experimental servers for console are only officially hosted ones they do not have the ability on Xbox to host their own community servers for experimental. I'm not really sure on the logistics of this or whether or not it would actually be hurtful to Daisy or Xbox, but I think it's something that could be considered and might actually help because I know on PC, a lot of experimental servers, uh, community experimental servers are more full than official ones. So yeah, that's from ScaleSpader. Then we got one from uh, Project Lemons. Uh, he says, 
that uh, he hates the actually 1.21 update, not for the new features, but the, the for the amount of existing features they broke. He's referring to the other ones that I talked about, where the duplication of static items being uh, spawned in upon restart and not despawned, just adding up to breaking his servers and other things. If many of you know who Project Lemons is, he created Project Sigoria, which is a crazily modded uh, map with tons of custom asset places placement, so you can imagine his servers having a lot of issues because of this update. But overall, folks, the thing that we got to remember here is just like Dave said, that we should be focusing more on the amount of fixes that they're bringing and less on the content that they did not provide. What's cool about this overall statement is that Daisy itself has been responding to feedback tracker tickets like crazy. Uh, blessings to the um, to Geese, which is the guy who handles the internal feedback of the actually not the internal one, the feedback tracker for Daisy, because he has I think one two three four I have I found like well over ten tickets that he has personally responded to and has um, put up for internal testing, has confirmed it internally, or has already said that the bug has been resolved and will be coming in a patch very soon. This is actually really cool to see. What do you think about all this, Joe? I I can't wait to see what's happening, but I think what I'm most excited about is just the feedback from DayZ itself. The feedback to our feedback. Uh, I think that answers a lot of questions and relieves a lot of tension we might have on certain things we want improved. Uh, that's what I was referring to earlier when I said transparency. It feels like Daisy is reacting more to what the community wants as opposed to reacting to putting out fires like it did back in the path. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Hey, I think Dave already talked about the overall feel the community has been feeling for this update. And honestly, folks, I can't wait to see what they put out next. And I hope you folks stick around, even if you're frustrated by the bugs, because they always try their best to squash them. And if you know of a bug that hasn't been reported yet, go to the official feedback tracker and report it, because they won't be fixed if you don't let them know. But I think overall, this is actually going to be us wrapping up. Now, I do want to let everyone know that we did cover Daisy 1.21 and we did talk about our live streams, some funny conversations from Yarl, and some beautiful insight from Red Falcon. But at the end of the day, Daisy is an amazing and a beautiful game. But the key word here is it's a game. And do remember, folks, while May was the Mental Health Awareness Month, we do need to focus on mental health at all times at any time. So if you are struggling with mental health or you know someone who is or you just want to be up on top of it, don't be afraid to talk about it, go to a professional or seek help. Mental health is more important now than ever and we actually support you and appreciate that you actually take care of your mental health or the people around you. Now next time on our podcast, we're going to be talking about Project Zomboid. I can't wait to see you folks there and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you later. Well, folks, thank you very much for watching our video and this podcast episode. Please like and subscribe, and it definitely helps us when you do. Please remember that you can also comment down below in the notes. Thank you.